live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your educational, inspirational, sensational, motivational, keenly awaited, highly anticipated edition of the Trading Floor with your humble hosts, Chris Irwin, Andrew Barbosa, and Jeremy Alexanderson with a daily dose of mentally delicious brain food reminding each of you to love life, live life, and trade it. Hope you guys are doing well, slash sensational. Um, I do have a little bit of the flu, but that's okay. I think it'll only last um, probably two or three days, max. I've had it since Saturday sometime. So I don't expect it to go much longer. Uh, Ashley is taking good care of me, though. This is what I sound like when I'm sick. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Uh, I can get myself in a good state. I, 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 it might sound worse than I feel. I do. I'm, that might be true. I might sound worse than I feel. I feel actually okay. But <laughs> working to do sound like a CEO. <laughs> oh, sweet. I didn't know that's what that was, but I like it. Pex is all about that bass, your voice. In a world filled with traitors everywhere. I do have a good voice I, I, right now. Zane said you're at normal speed when you were sick. Yeah, man. You got it, baby. So today is Mentorship Monday. Today's the third hour. And on Mentorship Monday, I go through and uh, we review, we educate, we talk about the ins and the outs, and we give all the info. Um, and in the third hour, a lot of what we do is we focus on the general market. We go look at how our day trades are doing, and uh, we kind of go from there. And this, the only real day trade that we had today, and believe it or not, this is quite rare, for us to, or for me to find a trade this late in the afternoon, but British Petroleum just triggered. So we'll see how it works out. Um, again, we never know how a trade's gonna work until it plays out. Worst case scenario, um, we lose one R, right? That's worst case scenario. Stock does this, gets topped out, we lose an R, no big deal. Best case scenario, uh, it free falls, it falls out of bed, and trades down to here, the low of the day, which is about three or four R's. And that would be incredible. <clears throat> so we shall see, but it was a retest gap. Um, and we'll kind of see what's going on. So the first Monday of every week, I'm sorry, the first Monday of every month is Mentorship Monday. And again, that's where we go over everything. We go very slow. And I just kind of fill everyone in on what I'm talking about, my lingo, my nomenclature. Um, I, you know, get all the terrible jokes aside on Mentorship Monday. And then the rest of the week, we're gonna kinda go, you know, quote unquote, full speed. Um, where we go look through gaps. Um, tomorrow is Tech Giant Tuesday. Wednesday is Weekly's Wednesday. So on Wednesdays, we're gonna go see if there's any uh, weekly options that we can sell that expire this week and make some money on those. Um, kinda go from there, so. Should be, uh, should be all, should be great. And then Thursdays, uh, Thursdays will be Transportation Thursday, and then Friday will be Finance Friday, and we'll kind of go, and um, those are the things that we'll focus on specifically. But here's BP, we'll come back and look at that. Let's go look at the general market, and then some other swing potential trades, and then kind of take it from there. The DIA, uh, so we're getting some sell, sell off today, <clears throat> as you can see, <laughs> and we anticipated that, that very well could happen. Right, we mentioned uh, this entire time as we were trading up that coming into the end of the year, I mentioned one of two possibilities. And the two possibilities were possibility number one, um, we trade sideways in here and then continue higher. Possibility number two, which I think this is the possibility that we're in right now, is we're trading down and we should bounce. Will we bounce? Mm, I don't know. But with this kind of volume, I really think we will. Um, you know, it's I don't know exactly where, obviously, but uh, I'd be I would be a little surprised if we break below um, on the DIA one sixty nine. I I think that we will we might break below this pivot, um, get some bears in the trade. Bearish traders hop on board. They get embarrassed right here, then we bounce and make one higher, one more big thrust, then we get a rollover. That's probably uh, my general consensus, general plan, is what very well could happen. Will it? You know, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna let the candles and the gaps and the volume kind of dictate what I think uh, specifically is gonna happen. But right now, 
Uh, I'm only in two positions. I've shared that with you guys earlier. I'm in naked calls on Apple and I'm in naked puts on Best Buy. Now on the DIA, you know, if we pulled back into the 173 area and bounce, I'm all about that bounce at this moment. So if we do bounce, if we do bounce, I'm buying it. I think this bounce is going to be great. So we're going to kind of see what's uh, what's going on and what's going to happen specifically and see a little bit more info. But at the moment, <clears throat> uh, you'll notice that we have some big black candles and uh, we did kind of get some reversal signals and reversal candles up here. We're pulling back and uh, bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, if we get a strong bounce, which realistically could happen tomorrow, I don't think it will, but it could because uh, this is a retest gap. And to answer your question, Amy, yes, my gap theory, uh, I think is a good thing to call it, my gap theory works on the indices as well. So um, I almost kind of think that uh, 2000, 2015 will be semi-similar to 2014 where this is kind of where we are now. Um, I think this is where we're where we're going, right about there. And maybe we start getting more selling pressure than we had back in here, back in May, June. Uh, maybe, maybe not though. You know, I, I don't know. But I would say that's kind of my consensus is, you know, we'll get some end of the year, you know, the 2015 selling kind of come down to this general area, potentially. Uh, we should bounce and that should be viable. So we'll see what's going on. Andy asked a good question. He goes, where can I find info on the net, um, on net open positions? Net open positions. Uh, Andy, what do you mean exactly? Sell to open, buy to open, options or stock? What do you, what do you mean specifically? Um, Ontario, Canada's calling me. That's cool. Uh, so there's a DIA. I uh, still expect a little bit of a bounce. So I'm gonna go ahead and write in kind of my thought my thought pattern. Um, buy the bounce. B O U N C E. Kind of. Uh, kind of. Kind of. Kind of expecting a lower low just to shock some of the weak bulls. Why do I think that? I mean, realistically, we've been so whipsawy in the market um, back and forth. I think that, that just, that just, it just sounds good. It just sounds good. If that, you know, if we do this, do this, and we kind of start breaking below here, uh, I think that'd be very, very interesting. And he said, stock sell to open and buy to open. Um, this is a very, very good question, Andy, and I'll have to be honest with you. I don't actually know. I don't know. There's very place, various places where you can get information on how many people are short on the stock, uh, like what percentage. And we actually talked about that the um, recently. So highshortinterest.com is one that you can go and find out where there's a lot of people short um, specifically on a stock. How many people and who are buying and who's open? I don't really think that that exists anywhere personally. Um, I mean, you can find out if there's any uh, what am I trying to think? If there's any um, directors or people like that, you know, insiders selling, you can find that out pretty easily. But just the general public, the general consensus, who's short, who's long, um, the number of shares, I don't think you can find that anywhere. Volume is a good indication of uh, what people are doing, though. So if you have a lot of volume, you can always see, you know, volume in the candles, you can tell the sentiment. But the actual numerical value, that's a great question. And it's got to be honest, I don't know. If you find anything, let me know. That might be interesting to check out. It says total net across all traders for the stock. Mm -mm. No, I'm pretty sure that doesn't exist. That I know of, anyway. If it does, that would be new to me. I think that would be totally new. Do you guys know? I mean, you don't even know on options. That's the thing. Even on options, you know what the open interest is on an option. So you know if someone either sold to open or bought to open, but you don't know if if which one they did, right? If you sell to open or buy to open in options, you add to the open interest, but you don't know which one they actually did. 
So anyway, so there's my DIA. Um, I think I'm gonna keep this for the other general market as well. Uh, here's your SPY. Spiders pulling back nicely. So today was a really, really beautiful retest gap on the indices. Prior candle was black. Uh, if you're coming here to the hourly chart, you can see that the hourly had some really, really nice white candles. And the fact that we opened um, you know, right below that pivot on some of these stocks, to me, says that uh, you know, there was some really, really good selling coming in. So the hourly on the SPY was white. The 15 minute was black. So you would have waited for some type of retest on SPY um, for sure. And the retest really occurred in a few different places. Um, here was retest number one, uh, the failure, and it continued lower. Here's retest number two. Here's retest number three. Either one that you played uh, would have worked out okay. So I think all three of those would have worked out all right if you were you know day trading the SPY. Uh, I think it's a I think it's a pretty similar pretty similar um, to what I what I think on the DIA is on the SPY. This is a retest gap right here. And we we have retested, so bouncing tomorrow would not shock me. I would wait for a higher high or higher low. So I would more or less waiting for a close above this wick before I go bullish. So we'll start putting in those entries um, sometime you know tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday uh, on on the SPY. QQQs. Uh, so here's the cues. So right now I think we're just getting some 2015 selling. I, I almost, and tr truth be told, I'd be very, very skeptical of this as a double top. It's really, really kind of big. Uh, and there's no volume at all on the second peak. So if we do come down, I think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to say, oh, this is it. This is the time to go bearish. You know, it's a double top. Get in, get in, get in. And as I mentioned, I won't say that there's no way um, that it can't happen. However, however, if the stock retraces to this level and then we roll over and we start getting some reversal signals somewhere in this general area, um, then I could get behind that theory. So that'll be really, really interesting to see how, how and if that plays out. Um, so we'll see. That's all. That's the best I can say. It's a little bit of a little big to be. A double top but I've seen crazier things happen so there's the cues and then let's go look at the IWM which is the Russell and uh, we had a end of day trigger 121.53 that did not trigger um, so we'll continue to see we'll continue, continue to see how and if that played out All right we got to the resistance um, a lot of people probably went bullish on uh, 12.29 and it was just a good time to wait because again, the markets were very, very extended. This was a retest gap. And again, theoretically, ladies and gentlemen, not, not even theoretically, but this is the retest gap, what we're experiencing right now. This is the retest of that gap. So it'll be really, really fascinating to see how and if it, uh, it plays out. Any questions, concerns, thoughts, opposing views on the general market? Here's the dollar index. Uh, dollar index. It's just kind of skyrocketing right now. Gapped up, um, getting some selling pressure going on. Really, really interesting. Uh, or can I look at JCPenney a little bit later? Uh, here's your weekly. So dollar index um, looks fascinating. Looks fascinating. Brian said, how's the dollar affect home prices and or interest rates? Um, well, the dollar doesn't specifically, but what it does do, Brian, and it's quite fascinating actually, the theory behind this, um, but the two biggest things that people worry about the most with the dollar is inflation and deflation. Um, when the dollar gets stronger, a lot of people think that's inflation. It's actually the exact opposite. It's deflation. The stronger a dollar becomes, the less the less of it you need to buy something. So, as 
oil decro uh, declines and metal declines, the dollar's been going higher. If equities drop, um, the interest rates on homes, as far as real estate, will likely and potentially also drop. Because in a deflationary stage, a lot of people don't buy things, believe it or not. So people try to get people to buy things by declining the price. Um, and so you have a lot of price declines in deflationary market and not a lot of people buying stuff because they're, the dollar, their value has become stronger. And ironically, they actually spend less because they save it. They save their dollars because they know how valuable they are. Which is kind of interesting how that works out. Um, so at the moment, I would think that the dollar index has very has really really moved quite quite decently, and if we got something like this, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I think this is probable. Something like that. Now we've already gotten one retest, which was um, back approximately in December on the dollar. So you guys can see that this resistance at 88.51, we broke out, retested, and continued. That might be all we get. But let's hypothetically say that this happened, this happens, and so this decline would cause equities to increase, likely. So the stock market, that could be the one thrust higher the market gets that I still think that we're going to get. And then it bounces. Um, right about here, oil should and likely could continue lower. Metals could continue lower. Equities will likely drop. And therefore, interest rates and a few other things, um, housing, things like that, will, can, will how, the actual housing prices and things like that will potentially also decrease as well. So the dollar index uh, definitely helps a little bit with kind of what's going on. And that's fascinating to me that uh, the dollar is as strong as it is right now, which is, you know, it, which is great if you're traveling, you know, traveling overseas. So those are my thoughts on the dollar index. Um, very, 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 very high. It gapped up. We get a black candle. I think at some point we'll have some type of rotation, um, a little bit more of a full-fledged rotation, and then uh, we have some thrusts ahead. So that would be very interesting to see what happens. So um, SLV, silver. Silver right now is just in a, in a very interesting accumulation phase. Uh, it broke out of a very, very strong support. A lot of real-life traders made a lot of money um, right there on the bearish move. And they got into an accumulation phase. And realistically, it's gonna silver uh, and gold are really probably going to get kind of boring um, for a while, real, realistically. They're probably going to get kind of boring. I do think there's a little bit lower low left in them. Um, I think that uh, silver could trade up into potentially back up into 18, fail, and then make that lower low into 12, 13, maybe even 10 or 11. So I do think silver makes a lower low um, with the dollar making a higher high and the market you know, kind of rolling over potentially in the future. And if that happens, that's fine. But yeah, they're, they're going to get kind of boring. So metals, eh. Longer term, I mean, I'm talking like six, seven years long term you know for some of the younger people out there uh, if you do not have any metals this is actually a pretty decent time to start picking up some because they are low you know the whole buy low sell high thing it works out pretty well in the long term um, silver is low and Brian I think it's gonna look a lot like this I think that's what silver is about to look like so we're gonna have you know a nice something like that and, you know, 2019, maybe we continue higher. Take a screenshot. Come back in 2019. We'll see if that worked out. <laughs> I'll post on the internet. We'll see what happens. I do want to do that. That's why I like, that's why I like about TradingView, the charting software that I'm using. I can post analysis and come back and see the chart. So, um, so there's silver and gold. Gold's very similar, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's uh, it's it is bearish. I agree. It's more bearish than bullish. 
I think gold has a little bit farther um, to go than silver potentially, but it's, it's just fighting it. Um, silver and gold have equally punched me in the face uh, numerous times in the last four or five months. So I haven't traded gold or silver at all. <laughs> I've been waiting on them to make up their minds and be nice to me because they have not been nice to me at all. But uh, right now on gold, nice little bullish candle. Looks more bullish than bearish, but I think 114 is a very, very strong support. And we're breaking that support, but we're really kind of trading sideways. So in my opinion, I'd say stay away from most gold and, gold and silver um, for a little bit. There's, there's nothing really here that, that screams out pretty. This chart, this chart has a face for radio. It's a little, little rough. So, yeah, I would just, uh, you know, that, that's that's my thoughts on gold. <laughs> I don't really have much else, much else to chat, chat about. So, that's really about it. All right, let's go check in on BP, and then we'll hop over to some other swing trades. So BP, this is a this is more of a day trade. Next targets are about thirty five and some change, thirty five dollars. Uh, let's go to a fifteen minute chart. Usually towards the end of the day, this is really what I'll look at. Fifteen minute chart, getting some black candles. I uh, had a nice hammer ish candle um, last fifteen minutes. I'm totally fine leaving our stop in, having entry, and we'll just come back at about uh, eh fifteen minutes and see if it starts doing anything else. If it takes out this low um, on on BP, if it takes out this low, we'll move the stop down. We'll see how and if it continues to play out. If you do have the ability um, to hold a trade overnight on a swing trade level, that's not a terrible one either. Just FYI, the hourly looks pretty quite nice. The hourly, um, this could be a flag, or it could also be an evening star. It's the exact point where you just don't know what it's going to do. So this exact entry is a uh, day trade, but if you want to make it a swing trade, and you want the $35 to be a target, you could, if you wanted to. And he said, do you close out all of your day trades end of day, even if they have not gotten to the target? Uh, yes, ma'am. That is correct mundo. All right, cool. So we'll come back and look at BP a little bit later uh, for the day trade. So let's go look at um, Under Armour again. Under Armour and Stan. Um, my good friend Stan has a uh, bear call spread up here. Beautiful trade, Stan. Very, very nice. Let's look at the two uh, the long-term moving averages on Under Armour. And I still think the 200 is a good buying location. You know, if we trade down to this level, uh, $60 price range. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna bring it over here. On Under Armour, let's watch for a retest tomorrow and look to short it. So I don't have an exact entry yet, but Under Armour, in my opinion, would be uh, shortable. So we'd just be looking for a location or a candle to give us the signals of being more bearish than bullish. All right. Edge is bearish. Retest gap. Let's see if we retest on 1614. So bottom line, um, the retest could be tomorrow. I'm interested to see how it plays out. Um, the hourly chart would be probably the best way to understand where and when to get out or to get in. Um, so if I, here's the hourly. Hourly candle looks really nice. Gorgeous volume coming in. And uh, what do you guys think? So let's say... I know there's only 35 minutes left in the market, but let's say the, the market ends with a bunch of white candles and then gaps down right here tomorrow. Would that be a bearish sentiment in your opinion?
Yeah, yeah, it would. Just a little bit. <laughs> Angie says just a little bit. Yeah, it, it would, right? That would be the, the, the that would mean uh, that this is the retest action, and this is the gap action. Oh, that was, that was rough. So anyway, so if a gap down, that would be uh, that would be your bearish swing trade entry. So I don't know if that's going to happen, but um, on Under Armour, we'll we'll see. So the edge is bearish. It's a retest gap. Let's see how we get what what happens. And uh, our edge could be bearish down to this location and. Once we get there, we'll see. So I don't have an entry or stop yet because I don't have the candles. So we gotta see if it retests. Let's go look at JC Penny. So Marsha and Ralph were looking at this one as well. And um, truth be told, it closed below our end of day trigger at 626. Um, it did that Friday. I have my stop in at 689 as far as the analysis goes on JC Penny. Ultimate target 524. And long-term moving averages are bearish. The stock is making lower lows and lower highs. Um, exponential moving averages, we're below them. Looks nice. Looks decent. I would say today is probably some type of retest. I would just leave the stop in, and uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. It is a more bullish than bearish candle. I will agree with you on that. But I like the stop at 689. I do like the stop at 689. Because, yes, granted, it could pop tomorrow. That could cause some people to get in bullish, and then it rolls over a little bit farther. Uh, but, yeah, one one candle can change everything, but I don't think this is that candle. So the edge is more bearish than bullish on JCPenney, in my opinion. What's up, Mr. Meek? Um, Rob Y says, Jeremy, is the end of day the same as the 345 rule? Yes, yeah, same exact thing. So what this means, if I have a trigger that says EOD, that means that's a trigger that is applicable at the last 15 minutes of the market. Otherwise, it'll say intraday trigger. Um, let's go look at um, GILD, Amazon, Baidu, Home Depot, and Halliburton. And then we'll see if we have uh, anything gapping for tomorrow to look at. So Amazon. And Amazon, this is a... Uh, these are the ones that you guys have requested while you're here. And maybe Caterpillar. Um, Amazon. Well, pretty much all of our bull put spreads expired. I think January week one was as far as we got. And January week one was last Friday. Um, so... I mean, realistically, Amazon is sideways. I am, a, I mean, after this candle, I can see the sentiment. This is a retest gap. It's a small one, very, very small, but it is there. I would anticipate I could easily see Amazon trading down a little bit lower to maybe 284 and bouncing, but I'm very, very neutral on Amazon. I'm very neutral. So that means for me is um, I would say, hey, this you know maybe a bear call spread, maybe a bull put spread, maybe an iron condor. But at the moment we just have uh, just three regular black candles, nothing super special about them. Um, Amazon is trading very very sideways. I think we can all agree with that. And um, that's about it. That's about it. I mean it's you know there's. There's not tons and tons of edge on Amazon. That's what I'm trying to say. If you're looking at this chart, there's nothing that just is outstanding about the price action. Um, yeah, that's really about it. If I, if I was doing anything on Amazon, I would be doing uh, option strategies, selling, Probably non-directional, iron condor, bear call spread, bull put spread, something like that. Cool. Amazon done. We'll be looking at a lot, a lot of tech stocks tomorrow as well. Tomorrow is Tech Giant Tuesday, after all. Um, Baidu. Looking at Baidu. So I had a bullish two to three month per, uh, perspective. We had a uh, retest gap. 
entry was approximately here and some change. Stop was right there and want to be bullish in that trade for two, three months. And then we got stopped out just a few days afterwards. And what I love about that, um, specifically on Baidu, is I love it when you're in a trade. Um, ladies and gentlemen, one little newsome nugget for you. If you're in a trade, you should know pretty soon if you're right or wrong. Right? If you get into a good trade, it should go in your favor pretty quickly. Meaning that, you know, it, it, it should take it's either gonna get stopped out or go in your favor pretty soon. And that's kind of a general rule of thumb that you you know, if it happens good, it should. There's nothing really other special about that, but that's, you know, kind of clears it up. Um, but anyway, Baidu had a bullish entry over here, got stopped out a week later. Perfect. So at the moment, you can see that we have three black candles in a row. Uh, we made a potential lower high, and there's a lot of support right approximately where we're at, 217 and some change. So let's go ahead and kind of draw a trend line. There's a lot of support right there. A lot of support. So let me ask you guys this question. Uh, if we gap down tomorrow, hypothetically, to 214, is that a retest gap? Yes or no? Yep. It's going to be a retest. So that simply means wait for the retest before going bearish. Simple as that. Um, hourly chart on Baidu, and this is one Maria. <laughs> Maria never trades Baidu. I don't either. Um, me and Maria don't like Baidu. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is a nice little flag pattern on the hourly. And, yeah, if it gaps down, you know, wait for wait for this action and then, you know, get in bearish with a good risk-reward ratio. I don't know if it's going to happen. It could bounce off of there. I truly don't know. But Baidu on a swing trade, if I was going bearish, let's look at the long-term moving averages. Um, if we close below that price on Baidu, if we close below 216 some change, I would be more bearish than bullish. So let's say we get a white candle tomorrow and a bearish candle Wednesday, we close below there. I would be more bearish than bullish. Probably from there, ultimate target would be about the 200 simple moving average potentially. I don't mind that trade if we close below. That'll be an interesting one to keep our eyes on. So that's my thoughts on Home Depot uh, or on, on Baidu. Let's go look at Home Depot. And Home Depot is just in a very, very nice bullish trend. Um, Snap. We got within, uh, man, 20 cents of, an, of a really, really nice fib target that I wanted to hit. I'll take the 20 cents, though. Um, on Home Depot, I actually still would have and, per, and say that this is a bullish trend by the bounce, wherever the bounce occurs. Um, today's gap was a nice retest gap. It didn't gap super far, but it would have been a retest, and we would have played it as a retest gap. And uh, here's the retest and failure. Here's the retest and failure. Worked out well on Home Depot. So the daily chart, uh, I can see it being a slightly bearish. I mean, we do have kind of a, a bearish candle pattern up here. Uh, shooting star, almost a bearish engulfing pattern. Um, yeah, I say by the bounce. I don't really know exactly where the bounce is going to occur. I'd like to... Uh, Guess probably around the 100. Um, Orchid said, "How low can it fall?" Probably towards the 100 would be a good uh, a good target. Maybe near the 100 SMA. Yep, I think you're uh, I think you're spot on. Um, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, so today. On the overall market, we got a bunch of gap downs, 
and a bunch of black candles on Friday. So tomorrow, I'm expecting a rest or a retest of some kind. So let's say on Home Depot, I'm expecting something like this tomorrow. And then potentially uh, a future rollover, a little bit lower on the majority of stocks out there. Based on, again, just simply the gap that we got today on the charts. So if we got just hopped over to SPY, again, you guys can see black candle gap down to retest gap. So if we get a little bit of this and a little bit of this, can we start making some bearish money? At the, end of, at the end of the week, if we do rest and roll over. Yeah, we'll be quick about it. We'll be in and out pretty quick because any type of bearish trade right now is totally counter trend. But we can do quick counter trend trades. I'm all about it. I'll be interested to see how that plays out. Um... On Caterpillar, if we close below the wick of that candle, which it looks like we will, um, I would be bearish on it, yes. So my trigger end of day is a close below 8781. Uh, there's a chance that tomorrow we could re retest. Um, this is a strong gap. But my bearish entry would be 8781. My target would be 8189. And uh, if you're in the trade suite and if you're not, I think the stop could be placed in this gap. Stock could be placed 9071 since it's a really nice bearish gap. Target's about 81 and some change. So that's kind of my thoughts. Um, Brian says, I wrote in my trading plan to go long, to go long bearish on Google, but I almost broke my trading plan. Good. Well, I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> good, good, good. So yeah, so there's uh, there's Caterpillar. I like it. it looks pretty. Uh, if we do get a chance to retest it all tomorrow, I think that's I think we will. Uh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. The hourly, just a bunch of black candles. So the retest, we might even gap up tomorrow. Open right here. I mean, it's you know, I'm I'm more bearish than bullish. Yeah. More bearish than bullish on Caterpillar. All right, so there's Cat, Amazon, Baidu, Home Depot, JCPenney. Uh, let's go look at GILD. I'm gonna look at Netflix for my uh, biggest fan, Pat. Um, GILD is quite interesting right now. A lot of volatility going on in this thing. Um, we had a 97.95 bull put spread that we unraveled on the day of the gap. Uh, what type of gap is this, students? From here to here. There's a gap and go. Prior candle was white. Gap down. Gap and go. So... The stock definitely went, um, and right now is actually retesting. So I don't think that this gap gets filled. It's a very, very strong gap. I truly do not know. With this candle and this volume, um, I'm gonna hop over to where Randall Smith mentioned earlier. I think I'd actually go with a bracket trade on this one. And I would bracket the wicks of today. So 98.97 would be my more bullish than bearish. And 92.87 would be my more bearish than bullish. So this gap has a lot of bearish sentiment. It's a lot of people trapped in this trade. There's a very good chance this could be a retest. And I think this is a great place to bracket it. Because realistically, that gap should not fill. Uh, but if it does, because you know, it is the stock market after all, uh, if we close above here, I'd at least be more bullish than bearish. <clears throat> so, yeah. That's kind of my thoughts on GILD. 
I think I'd be leaning towards the bearish trade if I had to pick one. So, I'm uh, interested to see how that plays out. But I think I'd bracket trade it. Uh, all right, so Halliburton, we did have a, um, a day trade order set up, and it was right here. 38.56 by 38.73 and mentioned um, target low of the day and if we get stopped out which it just hit the stop how much is your loss on Hal on Halliburton only one R that's right just one R um, Fruix says how's that a gap and go on GILD White candle gaps down. <clears throat> um, Halliburton also has a white candle yesterday and a gap down, but it's very, very tiny. Very, very tiny. Um, so I think if we had an entry Trigger bearish would be 3807. <clears throat> um, stop will be 4096. Target would be double that. So that's about, I mean, that's almost $2. 3796 and 4096, that's $3. So that, that target would be $6 away. Um, Halliburton is already at like a 52 week low. So I'd be a little cautious uh, with that trade. Probably, I probably wouldn't take it myself, but um, here would be the target. I mean, it did make a lower low and a lower high today. Volume increased. You had a white candle. Prior candle was black. Gap down. Makes sense to me. So as a swing trade, I would wait for that to continue lower. I would make it make it a lower low, stop to be placed above the pivot, target would be two hours away. That's Halliburton. Um, let's go look at Netflix. Netflix is a phenomenally interesting um, gap today. <clears throat> Netflix um, had a bullish entry at 346.43, want to close above that price. Oops, I'm sorry. And we did close above that price Friday. So I know some people got in bullish. I'm not saying you guys specifically. I'm just saying that I know analysts out there got in bullish because if I'm getting in bullish, then the, the other people see the thing, same thing I see. So close above our entry. People got in bullish. Then today we gapped down. We open below the open, um, or really close at it. So this is a pretty strong gap, um, kind of a gap and go, right? So white candle gaps down, not a super strong one. Would have been much, much, much stronger if it had opened um, below 332, but still a strong candle. <clears throat> um, I would imagine if we made a lower low, so we hit the stop. That'll stop my that'll stop me out and probably a few other people, and I think from there Netflix would probably be on target for about three ten. Would probably be the next target. So, we have the analysis for a 300, uh, 295 bull put spread. If you're in that trade again, I wouldn't even worry about it or think about it unless we close below three ten, which I don't think we will, on Netflix. I think we very well could come down to this support and then start balancing, if that's the case. But uh, our stops in place if you're in it, and um, I'm interested to see how it plays out. Higgins, yes, on this bull put spread, um, we could still, you know, if if you have a stop at 327, you could buy a protective put, right, just in case it continues lower. But on this particular spread, I wouldn't even worry about it uh, unless we close below 310. Because <clears throat> that's pretty far away. 
So that's Netflix. So right now, um, bullish analysis is triggered in. Don't have a really a great bearish entry, other than again, if it continues lower than the stop, uh, 327, likely could trade down to about 310 and some change. So let's go update us on BP, British Petroleum. And then um, it's probably the favorite, my favorite trade of the day as far as the analysis is concerned. So we have 14 minutes before market close. And we're pretty much again at break even. So didn't roll over like we wanted it to, but we're not getting a hose, which again is always beneficial. So I think for right now, um, we would leave the stop in where it's at. And maybe we just get out of this trade for break even, and that'll be that. Uh, maybe in the last 14 minutes, we get a volume spike down, but <clears throat> I guess that'd be best case scenario, uh, but we'll see. So we'll come back and look at that one in just one second. If you did want to move your stop down, I mean, you could place it you know, just barely above the 50 exponential. Let's go look at HTZ. Um, Hertz Global. Zane and Orkin are talking about this one um, in the chat. Uh, Hertz Global. <clears throat> yeah, looks interesting. So you had uh, a little bit of a pennant pattern right there that broke bearish. Let's go to the hourly chart on Hertz. Hertz, very, very nice little gap right there. Um, trapping some people today on the hourly. Trade down. There's a little bit of support uh, approximately where we bounced, 23.50. So it looks to me like on Hertz, we're going to have to wait for an hourly rollover. So it looks like we have you know some nice moves, some trades, and then let's see if we begin to roll over. I don't know if we, I don't know if Hertz is a great bearish entry for a swing yet, uh, but we, we it might happen. 15 exponential, uh, 50 moving. I'm sorry, 15 minute kind of looks like a little bit of a double bottom. So yeah, I, I agree with Zane. He says it's not the best swing. It just had a good candle off the long term moving averages, and I agree with that. Uh, here's your daily. Daily moving averages. Um, it's a good candle, failing the 100. So. Yeah, if we trade up, again, if we trade back up into here and begin to roll over, um, potentially a bear call spread or call sale or something up there. Yep, I agree. All right, cool. Um, Oregon says, not a bearish swing. <clears throat> no, no, not what, I, not what I said. So if we're going to bearish swing... Got to wait for the trade to come up and then roll over. And that hasn't happened yet. So if that happens in the future, um, I'd say give that one a day or two, Orkin, before we take that bearish. Orkin, by the way, how you doing on X? Are you in it, out of it? What's going on? You should be destroying that trade right now. I think Orkin today is up like almost 10R. Which is great. <clears throat> um, yeah, he he I think went short up here somewhere, and initially a very very good risk reward. About two or three days ago, he had to stop somewhere around thirty and asked kind of where it should go. Um, at this point, Oregon, if I was, um, I, I'd find your target, or wherever your target is, you know, wherever you want to make it. But uh, if I was in this trade, um, I would take your stop, put it at twenty seven eighty one. That's where my stop would go. And uh, trade it to your next target, wherever that might be. Um, it theoretically might go as low as 1826. <laughs> It'd take a heck of a long time before it did that. But um, I'd probably be pretty happy with about 2250. And if you got it at 26, you said that was just planned. Beautiful. All right, cool. He said, my short position's closed. I exited at my target of 26. Very nice, man. Proud of you. So I'm looking for a new swing. I actually am too, Orkin. I don't I don't have one that just jumps out at me yet. Um, GMCR was, and kind of still is, really, really pretty from last week. Uh, did you guys get a chance? Did anyone take GMCR? Cat is much better than... HTZ by far. 
so I'm comparable. <clears throat> Cat probably one of the better swing trades out there, yeah. Cat looks nice. All right, so Higgins is in Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. Um, looks looks pretty, man. Looks looks nice. I mean, you're getting you have you have five or six black cows in a row. Market's already selling off a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. What's up, Mr. Tom? Glad that you made it, brother. <clears throat> uh, so, what's gapping tomorrow? Oh, let me go ahead and tell you where you guys find your recording. So, um, for in, uh, this week, again, this week, I'll be posting all the recordings um, for the Enrichment Week, youtube.com. So, go to youtube.com. This is the easiest way to do it. Type in real life trading, click enter, and select this icon right there real life trading select that icon and you'll be able to see uh, all three hours of today I'm actually working on uploading as we speak um, the last hour Ford says will the trade calls still be emailed to us the trade calls be emailed I don't think I ever emailed trade calls I don't really know exactly what that means for. Um, I can say, as like a just a pause note, uh, that my email capability is severely limited uh, for the next two or three weeks. I know the majority of you guys know why, but for those who don't, uh, I'll simply say uh, a recent former employer uh, has filed lawsuit and litigation against myself in real life trading. For unlawful competition and um, I am on court order to not contact via email more or less any of their prior clients so yeah kind of uh, kind of on hiatus with that one for the moment so for I'm actually not able to email anything out at the moment at all I don't remember emailing I don't think we ever emailed specific uh, trade setups other than what trading view sends out. So that's what you're referring to. Um, but no, the actual physical recordings, uh, I am unable to email, unfortunately. So hop over to Real Life Trading, uh, the YouTube channel, and any video I post, uh, I would love if you guys can post there. Um, Amy, if you want to get alerts to any, any trade that I publish, um, go to Trading View. I'll send you the video. Give me one second if I can find it. How to follow real life trading on Trading View. Hey, friends, group. family, and real life. an email on any um, uh, trade that I chart and publish, uh, as I, you know, probably ones I love a lot for it, if that's what you meant, brother. Uh, you guys will still email that. That's all about how to follow us through. Um, it's all about following us through uh, TradingView. He says yes, got it. So Amy, yeah, if you want to see what I see, um, follow that link right there. And for those who are watching the recording who are not in class, oh Snapdragon, what did I just do with it? Where did it go? Oh pins and needles. Uh, just go to YouTube.com. And type in um, how to follow real life trading on Trading View. Follow real life trading on Trading View. I believe that works just fine. Yep, first thing that pops up. So just FYI, if you're watching the recording, you want to know how to get uh, access to any trades that I post. Um, that's a great way to do it. Anything gapping between now and tomorrow that you guys want to look at? Uh, Orkin, I haven't posted any charts today. Farouk says, what to do with BP? Oh, that's good. Yeah, good call. 
BP, five minutes left. Oops. Probably close it for break even. Five minutes left in the market. Um, if you have the ability to hold it after hours, I think you can. Um, BP, this is either a flag and it'll continue bullish or it's an evening star reversal and could roll over. If you want a decently okay swing trade on BP, I think that one right there is pretty decent. So if you close BP right now for a day trade, you didn't lose anything, didn't make anything. Um, there you go. That's pretty much about it. That could also be a swing trade though. 36.10 by 36.32, depending on how we gap and if we gap and what we do tomorrow. Anything else gapping to, uh, between today and tomorrow that you guys want to talk about? Any earnings or anything out anything out there that you guys want to view? Tom, so do you think Tesla's going to bounce now that it's uh, in the retest? Um, Tesla, it failed my do or die circle. I think I'm, I'm pretty bearish on Tesla at the moment. I'm going to wait for Tesla to do some of this action, hopefully in the next two or three days, and then I'm going to uh, mitigate my risk like a champion on Tesla. But yes, it does look more bearish than bullish to me, as as we thought. Hourly gap down today uh, was beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. So I'm kind of expecting some of this to happen, and then some of that. Um, so I'll be keeping a very, very close eye. Uh, weekly Wednesday might be fun on Tesla. Um, Amy, is XOMA have, does that have earnings? Rick says CMC. All right, CMC. Let's get some earnings out there. Commercial metals. Uh, okay. So CMC, um, here's the trade for tomorrow. If we gap and open below 15 bearish retest, if we open above, <coughs> what would this be? 1727 bullish gap and go keep 200 SMA in mind as potential target. There we go. There's CMC for tomorrow. Anything else, Gap, you guys will look at before we uh, close out the market? Anything gapping or anything? Oliver said, isn't Apple beautiful today? It is indeed, man. Good trade on it, brother. Trade right down to the 100. I'd love to see if it bounces from there. Ladies and gentlemen, was that a pretty quick three hours? I appreciate you bearing with, uh, bearing with my uh, sickness voice thing. I'll get better soon. As long as Ashley keeps taking care of me, doesn't, doesn't murder me in my sleep, I'll be fine. <laughs> Dale said you did really good. Thanks, ma'am. Well, no, truly, I appreciate you guys. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. I'll definitely feel better. Don't worry. Um, let's give it two or three days. And I'll be back at 100, percent and I'm uh, I'm ready to go 2015 hard. We're gonna we're gonna have a blast. It's gonna be simply sensational. So tomorrow, um, it's gonna be great. Julie says have some hot tea. I probably am gonna go buy out. Uh, go buy some rum. Um, this alcohol that got me in this mess in the first place, I'm sure. But uh, <laughs> some rum and a hot toddy. Mm. I think I might be doing that. There's a good chance I will. Anyway, you guys rock. Have a good night. You're phenomenal. And until next time, remember, love life, live life, and trade it. See you guys later.